Okay, it is essential to keep your workplace clean and not only does it help with your project but it stops getting things in your fingers so with the aid of your ruler, clean up all the mess. Alright, don't leave it too late in the project if you end up working around things making life more difficult for yourself. So all those little pop rivets and things, sweep them straight into the bin. Get rid of them, we don't need these. All these bits and pieces, just scrap metal, recycle that later, put that into the scrap recycle bin and be turned into a little Japanese car. Get a piece of material, and just remove any unwanted stickers and things on the job, we don't want to leave that on the job, the customer won't be very happy with that. Okay, also stick that straight in the bin. Alright, got our bit of quad spouting, as you can see it's been spread a little bit so we need to just bend it back into shape so we're going to just careful with the fingers but just bend it back into a shape sprung steel oh all right so when we hold it up both the, the the back and the front are parallel as you can see that's still rather sprung so we're just over bending it careful not to change the profile but now oh now we can see that the back and the front are parallel and square to the base. Alright, on both ends. A uniform looking shape. Alrighty. So we're going to make a, an external angle. So we need to take it apart. With this project, we take it, it's, it goes into two separate pieces. So it's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to build. But very similar marking out methods. So we are now going to, to measure the width of the spout and they're parallel to each other and I'm not sure if you can see that on the video but that's 115 millimetres so from the, the back of the spout to the front of the spout is 115 millimetres. We also because the bead sticks out past that point we need to measure the distance that that is. I'm not sure if that comes up in the video but that's 17 millimetres in this case. Okay so we've got We've got a distance of 115 millimetres plus 17 millimetres for the bead. So in the middle of a bit of spouting, this bit of spouting is 600 millimetres long, so in the middle of the spouting we will mark a point at 300 millimetres. Alright, at our 300 millimetres point we need to go each side of the bead. Now because we, are, we want it at 45 degrees we're going to go each side of the bead 17 millimetres. 17 mil that way and 17 mil the other way from centre. Alright, so because it's 17 mil that way, if we go 17 mil that way, the angle between there and there is 45 degrees. From those 17 millimetre lines, we're going to use the square, set the square on there and draw square lines off the bead up the face of the spare on both sides. Alright, and obviously from the centre because we need to mark a centre line on the spare. So we can see that that lines up with the centre line. We'll continue that centre line all the way over the spare. Line, lining it up from the face so it goes all the way over. And a nice square line. Right, from this point we need to mark out our lines our points of 17 millimetres again because we've, we've deducted the 17 millimetre line so we mark 17 millimetres each side of the centre line and from that we'll go 115 millimetres because that's the width of the spouting so 115 mil from those new points there and 115 mil from the other point is there again because that's 115 mil that way if we go 115 mil there that angle there will be 45 degrees. Using the set square here, we'll line up our lines on 140 uh, on the 115 mil line, and sliding over the front, make sure that that line marries up to the edge of the square. Once we've worked that out, we can draw a line across the bottom of the spout on both edges. Alright, 
Notice I, I must have been a couple of mil out on that particular point because when I sighted it up from here, it sighted up to be just a couple of mil over. So I'll just recheck that to make sure of my measurement. There, it's, it's somewhere in between. But at this stage, this is only a set out. So these lines are purely a guide. Okay. We get a bit of sheet metal and bend it to about the shape of the spouting. So it's at right angles there with a little toe on it at 90 degrees. So we sit that on the spout and we can see that that is the same shape as the spouting. So with the use of this bracket, we can connect our lines up for that curve. So siding up the front and siding along the baseline there, we can draw the, the curve in along that roll of the, the spouting there. Also, we can mark a mark the front bead as well with that other piece we've allowed there. So we do that on both sides. You have to spring it with your fingers a bit and, and when they if they work out in the right spot you know you've you are correct because what this will be will be one continual 45 degree line through the spouting. Okay. We'll now we'll square down the back at those points. Similarly, what we need to do now is add some laps. The water will be running in that direction, so we need to have our lap on this section here, so that overlaps there. So again, what we'll use is the set square and the ruler and allow for a 20 millimetre lap. 20 mm is the minimum lap for silicone joining a product. And just down the back. And we'll just continue that line down the back square. Gives our tag a little bit extra length, but we can trim that back later. These lines are purely a guide at this stage. When we run our finger along the, the around the bead there, we can feel where it starts to get straight again, so where the roll stops. At that point, we just put a, put a mark, and again, we will then square off the back at that point. This section here will be our lap. So don't cut that off and we need to trim very accurately along this line. As long as on the back and the bottom, we also need a lap on the front. So what we're doing is here, as, as high up as we can possibly go, so right underneath the bead, we're gonna draw a line for a lap, and again, we run our finger around, and just as it starts to curve, we'll put another point there, and that's where we'll stop our lap. If we, tr if we run that line further down and try and fold it, it changes the profile of the spout, and looks rather ugly. All right, so this is also a lap. Sometimes it pays to mark that on there. Pencil's not working, so that we don't cut that off. Okay, because we, because this section is fitting inside this section here, we're gonna make a small allowance on this section so that when these two corners join together, there's something to overlap. So what, we, what I generally do is allow five, an extra five mil up the, the face. Continue that around. We can use the bracket that we used earlier to get a nice line to continue around and just taper that off to a vanishing point down there somewhere so it doesn't go too far. Actually that's gone a little bit far in this circumstances. We'll just just as it goes past the roll there, we'll just taper that off. Alright. At this stage we're ready to cut this out and we need to cut the bead with a hacksaw. Okay, so I'll get the a hacksaw. This hacksaw is, is with an orange blade. The orange blades generally depict the 32 tooth blade. 32 tooth blades are very suitable for cutting sheet metal. Okay, so we're going to sit it on the edge of the bench and when we cut the, the uh, bead, we need to run the hacksaw as if we we're going to cut through the whole section in one piece. But of course we can't cut it all off because we need to leave our laps. So we'll just, on the centre mark, we'll just give it a little bit of a starting point so that the hacksaw doesn't slide off the bead and now we're going to cut down on the angle of the bead noticing that the hacksaw is following the cut as if I was to cut all the way through that bead notice as I'm cutting this I'm not taking the line out completely I'm just cutting on the waist side of the line that will mean that there'll be no gaps in the front of the spouting later on So the hacksaw is positioned so that we'll be able to cut all the way through that spout. And the reason for doing that is it gives us the, an accurate um, 
mitre at the top of our spout so that when the two are turned around and joined together, they they join up very nice and neatly, no gaps. Okay, done one side, we'll do the same to the other side. So don't cut past the roll here, otherwise you'll end up with a, a gap in the front of your spout. That's not what we need. We'll move that triangular piece away because that they will join together when it's turned around at 90 degrees. <coughs> okay, that's about as much as we can do with a hacksaw. So now we'll get our tin snips again, remembering to leave the lap on the back, and we will start cutting with our tin snips. So as we cut with our tin snips, we get to the top, we get to that the corner there, and the tin snips don't want to go any further. So rather than bend the spouting or, or um, damage your whisk snips, you use your other set of snips and cut a line about 30 millimetres parallel away on the waist side of the line. Remember not to cut your lap off. Bend that up. By bending that up, that allows the snips to cut it more accurately. Now we can cut along our other line there that we have marked. And as I get in, as I go further along there, the snips again start to bind. So what I'll do is cut a parallel line along the base on the waist side. And we do want to use this section later on to form the gusset for the front of the spout. So we'll try not to damage too much of that section there. We can cut along the line. Just continue that cut all the way up because these other cuts around here need to be very, very accurate and it's best to do that after you've removed some of the material. So again, we'll cut the back. This time we need to, we'll cut on the line. There's no lap on this side. There's only a lap on one side. So again, the snips are starting to bind so I'll go to the other snips. Cut a section up there. Pull that up out of the way and start cutting along here. Remember earlier we marked an allowance, a 5mm allowance for where the two bits of the front corner meet together. Just, just remember to leave that on there. Then we cut around there. We can take that triangular section away. Now save that for later because we'll need that to form our gusset. Alright, now we've done that, we can continue cutting along the outside edge up to the bead, cutting along that, that uh, allowance line and just trimming it off back to our cut on the bead. Okay, that piece is ready now, we can start getting this piece ready. Alright, so cut the material we don't need away, try and cut as close to the bead as possible, that'll alleviate any holes later. Remove that section. We only need about a 20 mil lap there, so we'll just cut on the outside of that line. That's 20 millimeters. Cut that little bit off there. From the front, just cut in along that line there to the line we've marked so that it doesn't encroach on the roll. And again, yep, mark the line we've marked there. Okay. This bit, if we try and run the snips around there, it tends to um, damage the spouting, and we don't want to damage the spouting, so we'll just take a section out here as if we were to cut all the way through. We'll point there, move that, and allows us to get our snips in for a more accurate cut going the other way. All right, remove that bit of material. You'll notice there is a small bit left there. We can just trim that up. Okay, so we've followed the line around there, it's a nice curve, it's not um, damaged, hasn't damaged the material at all. Okay, with the use of a pair of flat pliers, we'll bend on that line now. Remember that line is square with the bead. Bending that around square. Okay, alright. We can remove some of this excess uh, material here, some of the rubbish, so we don't get it, end up with it in our fingers. Chuck it straight in the bin, so I've got a bin right beside me there, so I can chuck it all in the bin. I don't want to get any of these little bits of metal in my fingers. All right. Now we can start to sit this together. All righty. So, generally speaking, it looks okay at this stage. We've put it all together. We go, oh yes, this... I can see that the allowance I've made around the front, there's plenty of an allowance there to trim off later and tap around. It looks relatively square. I'll use the, the square to actually see. Oh, 
I was a little bit off there, so we pull, pull it around the square so that the back is square, make sure the back is square. At the same time that we do that, you need to hold down to make sure nothing moves and have another look around the front and see that there isn't a, plenty of allowance so there will be no gaps at the front of our spout when we join it all together. Okay, important to look down in this area down here to make sure that there's no gaps when it's all formed up. So again, I need to make sure it's sitting in a square position. That's square along the bottom of the spouting edge where the fold is. It's the most accurate point to do it. I can see down there that's all going to join together very neatly. So at this point, I can uh, make sure it's all sitting together very tight. And I can put a, another pencil mark up, this, uh, up the line. As I say, that previous line was really only a guide. But in this particular case, it's uh, almost exactly on the line. Just mark it at the bottom and square a line up. It's about two millimetres away, which is you know, close to the thickness of the material. So again, this, these lines are only a guide up until this stage. Now we can put a new line up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the base section here. I'm just going to cut along just, just around from the curl. If you cut in here, this section out here, quite often you'll end up with a little gap in the corner of your spouting, which looks very unattractive. The spot that it's going to leak and not acceptable by my standards. Okay, so I'm going to trim along, trim along that line with the new line that I've marked. Turn the snips around, come up and just on the side of that line there, just put a little nick. That little nick helps the spouting bend in that particular point. Okay, again with my pliers. You can use lap folders if you like. I'm going to bend, bend those lines around slowly but surely until they're square. Alright, similar to the, uh, the fascia spout that we did earlier, I've ended up with a little lip there. That little lip can cause a bit of an obstruction for water and stuff travelling down the spouting. I don't want to have any, any build up, so we're just going to tap that down with a hammer. And by tapping it down it actually just pushes the material over and helps us cover up any little holes we may have ended up in the corner with the snips, we'll just trim off that little point there, make it look a bit more even. Alright, two pieces put together now, you can sit them in there, and with the uh, aid of some locking pliers, because it acts like another pair of hands, the locking pliers also protects our hands from getting drilled. We can clamp that together, make sure that they're tight, those ones should work themselves loose. Pushing down on the spout so the bottoms are joining up, Oh, a little bit too tight that time. Alright, so that's not going anywhere. Now we can put our spout around and have a look at the square. Make sure that it's square. Make sure that it's square. Recheck all of your angles to make sure that it's going to fit. Now I can see that that's... I've missed a little bit of material in that corner there. I've left that little bit of material there, only by mistake. So what I'm going to do is... And that's going to stop the bead from joining together. I'm just going to use the pliers and just try and pull that around a bit further so that that's not going to be in my way. Alright, now when the beads go together, as you can see, they're very neat. So we'll get a beautiful job out of that. So again, with the square, always checking for square because the houses are built square. Along the bottom of the bottom edge of the spout where it's folded, because that's where it's going to hit the fascia. Pull that spouting around until it's right on square. Just apply a light bit of pressure so the spouting doesn't move. You can, if you wish, put a little line down here so that you can tell that the spouting stays in the right spot. Also gives you a line to silicone to later. Alright, now that that's there, we can start drilling. So the width of that lap, the width of the lap along here is, is we allowed 25mm through there. So we want to drill in about the centre of that lap. So just as far up, close to the cut there, we we'll drill a hole at 20 in between that lap. Shouldn't really drill into the bench top, I should have a bit of timber under that. Okay, I can see that that uh, hasn't moved from the line, so I'll move the drill further down to the next corner. Okay, just blow that swarf out of the way, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses so you don't get anything in your eye. And we can now release those locking flies. Clean out all that debris, make sure there's 
no swarf on the bottom tied up in any of his joints. We can apply the silicone. Apply the silicone to your laps. See the lap there? And there's going to be a lap up there as well. And along the front. Okay. Now, using this pop riveter, we'll be able to pop rivet these holes together. We know that when they're pop riveted together, they will be in the square position because we checked that numerous times. Turn the spare thing upside down, make sure the spares go through from the bottom. I don't want to see that, because we, we, this is the scene edge, so we want to make sure that it looks tidy. Alright, so get those holes line up. Okay, it's pulled it all down nice and neat. Again, we'll use those locking pliers to lock that back together. And we're going to drill a couple of holes in the back there. In the middle of the lap. So about 10 mil out from the side. Just blow any swarf and stuff away from it. Put the pop rivet in, make sure you've extracted the spent pop rivet stem so it doesn't uh, blow up in your face. Straight into the rubbish bin. Saves a bit of cleaning up later. Through both holes. Straight into the bin. Okay, we remove those locking pliers now. That's finished. Alright, so let's pull that edge together. We've put silicon in there previously. It should be still checked to make sure it's square. It's still in the square position, which it should be. Okay. I'm going to turn it over now and measure the distance of those pop rivets. Those pop rivets are fairly close to the edge. Probably would have paid to have them out a little bit further. They have sandwiched the two pieces of material together. Draw a nice, draw a line through your spout there so that it, um, your pop rivets are in a nice straight line. Okay, measure the distance of your pop rivets. This situation is 100 mil apart, so if I were to put one in the middle, it would be 50 mil. We we know that we can, uh, the pop rivets must be only 40 mil apart maximum, so I'm going to have to split that up and go 25 mil apart. No, I don't. I can. That's that'd be too many rivets, so we can go to 33 mil. So we'll go 33 mil, 33 millimeters, and the last one will be 33 millimeters. So 33 millimeters is less than 40. So that complies with the regulations now on those lines. Fill those holes. Well, using a cloth now because we don't want to cut our fingers on any of that uh, sharp material. Give it a bit of a clean. And we can put the remaining two pop rivets in, knowing that that back area there is still square. Okay, give that a bit of a clean. Quite often you get a bit of silicon come out of there. You didn't clean that up very good. That's part of the old sticker still on there. A bit of turps will clean that off later. Okay, so nice, nice line, nice spacings most of the requirements. Okay, so now we're going to turn it over and we want to have this bead and make sure that that bead goes together in that position there so that there's no gap. There's no gap forming there. What we've got to do is try and maintain that so holding it in position we're going to get a pop rivet up this top area here. So this is the 5mm allowance that we allowed before. You can see that that would be the, the distance that it's set back. So when we pop rivet we need to come back about uh, we've left a 20 mil lap there, so come back about 10 mil from that line and keep it reasonably high. That'll help the beads stay together. Hold that, as, hold that together with your hands as tight as possible. Keep your fingers clear. Not pushing too hard, because if you push too hard, what you'll end up doing is bend the lap out of the way. So now that that's done, we can get that pop riveted. 
Only a hole up. Okay. When that bead pulls together, that was going to pull together nice and tight, and there'll be no gaps there. So we can we can get another pop rivet in the front there now. So have a look at the front where you folded it. If you, you may require to put a mark there so that you make sure you get it in that lap. So I'll just mark where the lap is there. Now it's up there, same distance out from that line, put another pop with it. Okay, let's walk out of the way. Pop rivet that together. Okay, a little bit of silicon come off on my finger there, rather than spread it all over the job, I'm going to wipe my hands clean at this stage. All right, starting to come together really tight. See a little bit of excess excess silicon there. We can start to spread that around over the pop rivets. We must seal the pop rivets up. They're open tight pop rivets, so if any water gets around those, they do leak. So it's important to put a little bit of silicon around the pop rivets. Not too much because otherwise you'll cause a bit of pondage and the uh, the water won't run away freely. This particular situation. I need a little bit of a little bit more uh, silicon in the corner there to cover up that little corner where there's no material. Again, I don't want to put too much on there. It's enough to, to do the job. Push a little bit into the crack there. Even though I know that there's sandwich silicon between. Okay. So we're happy that we've sealed all those pop rivets up and it's not going to leak, smooth it all out. Move any excess with your finger and then give your finger a bit of a wipe on a rag so as you're spreading it all over your tools and putting your fingerprints all over the job. Okay, now with this piece of material we had earlier we're going to form a gusset. This gusset's going to hold the bead together tightly and square. This is much too big at this stage so I need to trim it down a little bit. First of all I'm just going to trim off these excess points, excess material here that uh, could cause me a, an injury. Chuck them straight in the bin so they cause no further harm. All right. As we cut the bottom of the bottom of the spouting out at 45 degrees, what we need to do here is mark two angles here at 45 degrees off the back as well. So the two 45s create 90 degrees. With our pencil, we'll mark those marks here off the back. off the back. Okay, now trim those up. Not off any excess. <coughs> Pardon me. Going to those scrap bits. Toss them straight in the bin so they don't cause any further nuisance. Alright, so that angle there now will be 90 degrees. But we've got, got a little bit of excess material here. So we only need about a, about a 20 mil down from there, a fold, so that it stiffens the corner. So that the rule is actually 20 mil wide. So I'm just going to use the profile of the ruler there. Draw a line across the bottom as a guide. So we'll trim along this line here. Straight in the bin. Okay. Trim off these excess bits that are hanging out over the edge. All right. When we put that on there now, you'll notice that it only just fits into the corner. So we want that material to go over the corner, roughly half of that distance there, so we can get some pop rivets in there. So we need to take a piece out of the bottom here. It's coming about 15 millimeters. Same with the other side. We can put him on there. And I can see that it's fitting okay on this side. I need to take a little bit more out of this side here. 
Take another few five mil or so out of there. And now when I sit it on there, I'm gonna get the required cover. Okay, on a block of wood, we're gonna pre-drill some holes to a side. Not getting any dust, excess dust and stuff off them. Don't want that in the tied up in the silicon. Okay, so when this point reaches that point there, just work on one side at a time at this stage. So we'll work on this edge, keeping this, this edge here parallel to this the edge of the spouting. Mark a hole. But just with the drill, mark your hole. Quite often it, the uh, gusset will spin off while doing this, so. You really, all you're really doing is marking a hole. Once you've marked your hole, try and hold the drill on that point. Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble here. And drill the rest of the hole. These things can be very dangerous as they've got very sharp edges here. They get tied up in the drill. Very nasty cut. Okay, now we've got that on there. We can simply pop rivet that in place there. Now some of the danger has been removed because we haven't got a loose gusset flying around. Hold this edge parallel to your bead. Draw the other hole and pop with it that. Okay. Now when we do this next pop of it, we want to make sure that it's all pulling together really tight so that there's no gaps in the front of the bead here. So with the use of your body, we're going to pull it together really tight. Knock it in if we have to. And pop rivet that together. Okay, now when we look from underneath, there's no really serious gap we've got there. We'll be able to just tap that material around and it overlaps the whisker by a little bit. But the important part is we've got the back of the spouting square. We need to keep the front of the spouting square as well. So what we're going to do now, hold that around square with the square and get that last pop rivet in there. Alright, pull that around to your hole, have a bit of a check, hasn't moved, you can pop rivet that off. Sometimes whilst we're drilling a bit of swarf comes through, so just tap that out of the spouting, make sure there's nothing in the silicon, any swarf in that silicon, we want that removed. That starts to rust up, it becomes very unsightly, cause premature rusting. So just scrape that out, give your hands a wipe. Okay, so that's now nice and firm, that's nice and firm. It's made, it's basically made. And now for appearance sake, we just have to trim off some of this excess we've left in there. So just with a rag, I can see some silicon there. I don't want to be using the tin snips and the silicon. It'll only cause future problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim that back. We only want about three or four millimeters left on there that we're gonna knock around later to make a, a nice finish and also to just cover up any uh, gaps that we may have ended up with in that particular rolled section. Right, so with a nice sharp pair of snips, we'll start cutting that off. You can draw a line there to work to if you like. I'm just using, just cutting it parallel to that cut there. All right, trim a little bit of excess off here using other snips. Don't leave any fish hooks on there. You don't leave any fish hooks, you might need a file just to take that down. Sharp pair of snips are very good. Okay. Now we've done that, we're using a small hammer to tap that edge around. And that'll close up any gap that we may have created in there because we've only got the material, two bits of material touching each other at this stage because it's very difficult to form, form a lap on that section. 
We're just going to work that area around. Moving around. Trying to hit against something firm. Tapping it away until you close those gaps right up. Clean off any excess silicon. And that's rather neat appearance. Okay, just I so noticed with the with the bead, the bead spread a little bit. So we're just going to tap that together and close those joints right up. When the customer sees the job, they don't see any gaps. Okay. So the lap's in the right direction. Our pop rivet spacings are right. We've siliconed in between the joints. It's nice and square. And that's the sort of job you'd be required to do.